think nobody does fantasy better than uh, Matt Litovsky. And thank you, Matt, of course, for dropping by and hanging out with us here, trying to help our lineups a little bit, which is pretty damn important. And I got to tell you, Matt, it was an interesting week last week, fantasy-wise. Uh, again, a lot of people, I know a lot of people that rode that Fitzpatrick train once again heading into Monday nights, and it ended up putting them over the top, uh, you know, for the week there because they went with it, and I know other people of kicking themselves because they ended up leaving Matt Ryan on the bench over there. Was there anything, any big surprises to you last week that you go, wow, I just, I didn't see that coming? Oh, I mean, I think it's easily Kenyon Drake. Oh. I mean, five carries, three yards. Come on. Mm. What's going on? And uh, he's facing, you know, the worst run defense in the league based on yards per carry. That one shocked me. And, uh, you know, now we're sitting here going into week four, and anyone who drafted Drake second, third round hates him. Absolutely doesn't want to play him no matter what. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting here going, you know what? I think he bounces back, but no one trusts me. No one wants to believe me. Uh, so I don't blame him, quite frankly. I don't blame him, but... That was, I think, without question, kind of the biggest shocker of, the, you know, in addition to just like the big Josh Allen playing well against the Vikings and Latavius Murray doing nothing and some things like that. And that Bill's Vikings game, that was just a total a fiasco. Yes, it, it was an absolute mess there on a lot of levels. Matt Latusky, SportingNews.com, Fantasy God, joining us here. Uh, is it Patrick Mahomes? Just ride him until you don't have to ride him anymore. I know some people are just, they're locking him in, but there are some that are also waiting and saying there is he's not going to be able to sustain this historic pace the Kansas City defense has been awful I, I think average giving up or, or allowing 33 first downs a game uh, the last couple of weeks so Patrick Mahomes has to be this good otherwise Kansas City won't be that good but there is a time where he's going to run into a wall yeah absolutely I mean no one sustains this kind of pace everyone has a bad game at some point and I think with Mahomes, though, he's locked in the lineups. There's no question about that. This week's going to be a good test. Mm. I think a Monday night in Denver. A, you know, Denver's defense isn't what it used to be. It's not great anymore. It's good. It's not great. And uh, this will still be a test, though, for him, given the environment, given the situation. But, you know, at this point, I can't imagine benching him against anyone, you know, against the Jaguars, against anyone. I mean, he's in the lineup. He's got to throw. He's as talented, maybe, as anyone in the league. And he's going to run into a game, though. He'll throw some picks. He'll make some mistakes, blah, blah, blah. But as of right now, with the weapons he has, I mean, he's just looking like uh, like a sure thing almost every week. A lot of questions that we've been getting, Matt, regarding the 0-3 start for the Texans. A lot of people have been giving up on Deshaun Watson. Uh, even though, to me, last couple of games, Will Fuller, to me, is the uh, is the answer for Deshaun Watson. As long as Will Fuller is out on the field and he is healthy, his availability makes Watson that much better. And I do think he's, he's kind of shedded the rust here over the last couple of weeks. I think we're going to see a different um, Deshaun Watson moving uh, forward here. What do you think? Is it time to give up and, and sell him, or is it time to hold on to him and, and here he goes? No, I mean, look, even even though they obviously haven't won and it hasn't been quite like last year, his numbers are still okay. I mean, what he did last week, certainly, he's, he's going to get these touchdowns. I mean, obviously, he, you know, he's kind of got the Russell Wilson thing where he's being hampered by a poor offensive line. That's not good. I don't know if it's going to get better. But I think for fantasy purposes, he's still going to put up numbers. He's got two stud receivers and uh, some pretty good receiving backs that I think helps his cause. And, and we haven't even seen him really break out the legs yet and, and put up rushing totals. So I, I'm fine with Sean Watson. He's definitely not a guy I'm looking to sell. I might sniff around, actually, if the Watson owner is, is looking to sell, hmm. see if I can get him for cheap. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be good. What about, and this was a very, uh, it was, not many people talked about this, but I thought it was very telling at the end of the uh, of the Indianapolis game where uh, their idea of a Hail Mary was take Andrew Luck off the field and put in Jacoby Brissett. Does that, should that send red flags uh, to Andrew Luck owners that, wait a minute, uh, they had plenty of time to get that ball downfield, and instead of having him throw it downfield, they kept throwing these five-yard outs. Uh, do you think that's a, uh, that's a warning flag for Andrew Luck owners? 
Well, I mean, it was definitely emasculating for Andrew Luck. I felt bad. I mean, it's one thing to do that to Case Keenum, right? Be like, hey, we're pulling you for the big arm backup. But Andrew, I mean, I don't know. That was a sad moment, I think, for all of us uh, watching. But, you know, I think, I mean, yes, it's tied into the fact that his yards per attempt was like 4.1 in that game. He can't make all the throws. Like, I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, They said in the preseason, his fastball's not quite there. I think it still isn't. He's been okay. T.Y. Hilton's made some big plays. He's got, you know, his tight ends have caught some touchdowns. I don't think it's, it's, oh, well, it's all over for Andrew Luck by any means. But in terms of that high upside explosive starter that so many people have at quarterback with with the likes of Mahomes and some other guys, I don't know if he's that guy. I think he's okay. He's fine. He'll get you 200 and a couple touchdowns, some games more, some games only one touchdown. But, yeah, to me, he's, he's right on that bubble every week. You know, as of right now, probably in a vacuum, he's, he's probably outside the top 12, making him a fantasy backup depending on matchups. So I'm not super high on him right now, but, yeah, it'd be nice if he could if he could throw the ball downfield. Yep, there it is. Matt Letusky, SportingNews.com, uh, joining us. Fantasy questions, you guys in the chat rooms, you know where to go. Send them in to us here, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube live streaming across all of those platforms. And for those that had Jimmy Garoppolo on their team, uh, is C.J. Beather, is that a viable option in your opinion, or should people look elsewhere? I mean, I can't imagine he will be. I mean, he was bad last year. We saw it. I, I, it's just, this is one of those things where that happens. And, you know, you just write off Garoppolo, fine, drop him, moving on. But it's, it's, it's the fallout, right? It's the mm-hmm. Marquise Goodwin that everyone loved before the year. And, and you're, you worry about him. You know, with Kittle, as a tight end, him and Bethard were, were teammates in college. And we always liked that narrative. It was the Andrew Luck to Kobe Fleener we heard about every year. Uh, so I don't know if that's uh, real or not, but uh, I think it hurts Kittle's value. The, the one guy I think it really helps, though, is Matt Breida, who's already tied to the league lead in rushing, even though he's not getting a ton of touches. And in about in, in, in Beathard's time last year, which was, I don't know, seven games, you know, give or take, uh, he threw the running back 76 times. Mm. Like, this guy loves to check out. And, uh, you know, Albert Moore is not a great pass catching back, so I actually think it, it hurts the 49ers offense. There'll probably be more guys in the box to stop that running game, but I think Breda could really start doing some damage as a receiver. So in PPR leagues especially, I could see his value going up. Yeah, a lot of people are very concerned with uh, what's going on in Cincinnati. Giovanni Bernard, uh, Giovanni Bernard was a little banged up in that game. Didn't quite have the output a lot of people uh, hoped he'd have. Uh, we're still not sure exactly what's happening with uh, with Joe Mixon. The running game in Cincinnati, uh, it's, it's just either one of those guys at this point. It's probably better just to stay away from them. Well, you know, this week anyway, especially if Mixon is out, I like Bernard this week just because he's facing a Falcons team that the past two weeks have allowed 25 receptions to Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara. I think this is a game where he's going to do damage at least that way. I mean, the, the Falcons are so banged up on defense. they just uh, It's just tough for them to keep up. And, and Bernard, we know he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So I still like him this week. But if Mixon comes back, that just complicates everything. So this is probably a week you just want Mixon to be out one more, come back next week, then reassess because Bernard is in position for a good game this week. All right, let's uh, let's check it out here. We'll go to the uh, the mailbag. We got some questions. First one uh, coming in from Jeff. Uh, he needs a PPR flex. Is it Carryon Johnson, Austin Eckler, or Doug Baldwin? You know, obviously Baldwin might not play. I'm still skeptical. I think between those backs, it's Johnson. And I, Dallas is just a different defense when Sean Lee is out without question. Like, I'm not sold on Johnson just because of last week by any means. LeGarrette Blunt's still there. He'll still get the goal line carries. The problem, too, with Eckler, I, I think, is you look at when he produces, it's usually when, when the Chargers are trailing. And he gets some of that, you know, quasi-garbage time. And he also produced when Melvin Gordon was out. Well, Melvin Gordon's healthy. They're the biggest favorite of the week at 10.5 points. You, you don't figure there'll be garbage time. I think it's tough to depend on him to produce. With Johnson, hey, he's going to get the carries, you know, a decent amount, at least a dozen, and he's facing a team without, you know, their, 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 the, the key to their defense in Sean Lee. 
Matt Letusky, SportingNews.com, Fantasy Guru, joining us. Stardom, sit him. The question's coming in. All right, uh, here's a Giants fan, obviously. Wants to know, with Ingram out, is it wise to start Odell Beckham Jr. and Sterling Shepard in the same lineup? Yeah, this week it is. I mean, they're, they're playing the same. Mm. Saints are giving up the most fantasy points to wide receivers by a long shot. And, you know, you can say, oh, Marshawn Lattimore, he's a shutdown corner. Well, they haven't shut down anyone this year, and OBJ can produce against anyone. And then you look at Shepard going against their number twos. I mean, that's going to be a bloodbath. So I'm all in on both those guys this week. I think Shepard is going to be, you know, like if you're playing DraftKings or FanDuel or something like that, I think Shepard's going to be like in every lineup, and especially in cash games, and I think it's a, it's a smart play. Yeah. How about uh, we got another one coming in here. Should I uh, – is it okay to use Alex Collins with Buck Allen in the same lineup as a kind of wait and see with Kenyon Drake to get it right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want both those guys in my lineup because it just feels like you're limiting your ceiling. Mm. Uh, obviously, Allen scored every single week. Collins has scored two. So they can both produce. Uh, the only way I would even consider that is if it's a PPR league because Allen can get some catches and help you out. But it, it's a pretty pretty low ceiling if you start them both. I still like Collins a little more, a little more explosive, going to get more touches. And like I said, I, I think Drake Pumps is back. What do I know? I thought he'd go off last week. But, uh, you know, we see this all the time in the NFL. And as soon as it, it, you jump ship from one guy, he comes back, and you say, well, why did that happen? Mm. I don't know. I don't know why Jesse James has 132 yards one week, gets zero ca- or one catch, and Vance McDonald has 100 yards the next. I can't explain it. It just happens all the time. Yeah, it's, so, it's very strange. You're right about that. Another question coming in. Matt Latusky, <laughs> SportingNews.com, Fantasy God. Uh, we have a question about tonight. Here's an interesting one. Uh, he wants to know, who do you think uh, Xavier Rhodes will be shadowing tonight on the Rams? And uh, does playing Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs, does that make sense in this game? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to know who he's going to shadow. I, you know, I always think it will probably be the, be, the, be the top guy, which I think is Cook. But look, they got three quality guys who all produce. So I think really anything can happen there. And, uh, yeah, you know, the Rams, the Rams offense is pretty automatic, though. So I wouldn't be, told, you know, scared away from playing any of those three. And with the Vikings, look, Rams have a good defense. They can generate a pass rush, but both starting corners likely out. I'm, I'm playing Diggs and Thielen all day tonight. Yeah, all day, yeah. That's. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, especially with Akib Talib and Marcus Peters out. I think uh, this could uh, this could get very interesting very quickly, uh, and it'll be fun to watch and see how that uh, that unfolds. But I love having Thursday night football, college and NFL. So much going on here. What about? Oh, here's a trade question here. I like this. Uh, Anthony wants to know: Would you trade Sonny Michael and Chris Carson for Le'Veon Bell if you already have James Conner? God, Le'Veon Bell, man, he's just ruining everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably wouldn't. I, it's just because I don't. I don't really like either of those backs. I think. I think Michelle is the one who could really pop off. But boy, he has not looked good these first two weeks. Maybe he's just kept. You know, he was out preseason. I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him a little bit of a pass. And with Burkhead out, it, you think he's going to be in line, but. Boy, I don't know. And Carson, look, yeah, 31 carries last week. That's awesome. He's in position to have a good game this week. But Seattle running backs, they just uh, – you can't trust them at all. So, to make that move, I don't know. I feel like even Bell, with his value depreciating right now, you should still be able to get more. And if you have Connor, hey, you got a starter at least. You, you're not desperate. Got another trade question here. Uh, I've been offered Tevin Coleman for Doug Baldwin. I am a little light in the wide receiver. Is that is this a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would take Baldwin. Look, he's an injury risk. I get that. But, I mean, Col- look, uh, Freeman's going to be back soon. And then Coleman's value plummets. Mm. And Freeman could get hurt again. And Coleman could be good. But I just think right there, you know, you, t- you take the guy who's the number one receiver versus the running back who could be – you know, getting 10 touches next week. So, yeah, I would go with Baldwin there. And we've got uh, Tommy's coming in, wants to know, PPR League running back, James White or Alex Collins? 
Yeah, you know, that's a tough one because White always seems to get his no matter what the Patriots do. No, Burkhead helps him. But I do like Collins. I, again, another guy I totally get why people are nervous about him. But you look at the Steelers, they've only allowed one rushing touchdown to a running back this year, but they're allowing 4.6 yards per carry. I think you can run on them if a team's committed to it. Baltimore's weird. Again, you never know what they're going to do with their backs, but I think I, I kind of like Collins this week. And, uh, and, you know, PPR league, sure, you take white there, higher floor. But I think Collins is the higher ceiling. And uh, interesting here, uh, half PPR league, uh, should I continue to stash Ronald Jones the third? I mean, eventually he's going to – I mean, Peyton Barber's done nothing. Nothing, he's right. He's shown nothing. And I think he's going to get he's going to get stuffed again this week against the Bears. Then they have a bye – it's only a matter of time before they have to play. As much as that coaching staff doesn't like them, it just seems like a matter of time. But look, the buys are here. You're going to need that roster spot. So it really comes down to that. I mean, if, if, if you just don't have the space, I don't think you should beat yourself up for dropping them. But I would try to hold on to him as long as possible. All right. And is there a, uh, is there a must start for you this week on, uh, on Daily Fantasy? If there's, uh, is there somebody in there maybe won't be owned by 95% of the games? Somebody you're looking at that you think might be a solid play? I mean, you know, obviously, like I said, Shepard, but he is going to be highly owned. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to think for my own lineups I put in because there's, there's certainly got you know, it's funny. When you, you see, like, what happened with the Falcons last week, the receivers, I think there's a, a tendency for people to go overboard on Ridley and underboard on, like, Julio Jones. Yeah. So he'll still be fairly highly owned. He's obviously very expensive. But I think this is an opportunity to get in on him at possibly his lower lowest ownership, and it's a favorable matchup there at home. So, like, I would look at some opportunities like that. I mean, you could even argue the same thing about Antonio Brown with the way uh, Juju Smith-Schuster's playing. So, yeah, there's there's definitely some good opportunities for people in those situations. And I like Andy Dalton a lot this week, too. Ooh. I think that Falcons defense is garbage, and, and he'll, keep, he'll keep throwing. The Red Rocket, man. Keep him in mind. See, that's why we love bringing you on. Matt Latusky, SportingNews.com. Nobody does fantasy better than him. Make sure you follow him. Twitter, M. Latusky, Sporting News. Great articles all week long if you need some help with your fantasy team he is definitely a guy to turn to and of course he joins us every thursday at five o'clock so matt appreciate the time my friend good luck this weekend hope you win your uh, your leagues there and then we'll talk again next thursday all right sounds good appreciate it matt latusky sportingnews.com always great stuff whenever you have a chance to uh, to talk